Hello friends! This video is for those of you that might be paying permanent alimony and feel like there is no escape. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about a loophole here in Florida regarding permanent alimony. So stay tuned to see what that's about. Welcome back to the Divorce Broadcast. My name is Manny Sagara, coming to you from Miami, Florida. Alright, so for those of you who have been sentenced, I mean required to pay permanent alimony to your former spouse, according to the Florida Alimony Statute, there are only four ways to terminate an award of permanent alimony. The first way is if the former spouse passes away. Now, I know none of my viewers would ever want anything negative to befall their former spouse. The second way is if the former spouse gets remarried. The third way is if someone can show a substantial change in circumstances. Usually this relates to finances and it's really hard to prove in court. There has to be something significant regarding their finances where they can never pay alimony. Now the fourth way is the loophole. According to Florida Statute 61.14, permanent alimony can either be modified or terminated upon the existence of a supportive relationship under the same statute, which is 61.14. So, some of you may be thinking to yourselves right now, hmm, what is a supportive relationship? Well, we're gonna get to that right now. So I've always promised myself when taping this show that I would always try to give the no BS definition of what some of these legal concepts are. So keeping true to that, you have to understand that a supportive relationship is essentially either a boyfriend or girlfriend that you have on the side that you're hooking up with or living with that you don't want to marry because you don't want the permanent alimony to stop. That in a nutshell is what a supportive relationship is. So this information is good for the person that is paying the alimony award as well as the person who is receiving the alimony award because if you are living or cohabitating with a third party tread carefully be careful because simply by not getting married that's not enough if you're living with someone and that relationship meets the legal criteria of a supportive relationship your alimony award may get reduced or terminated in terms of defining what a supportive relationship is, well, Florida Statute 61.14 spells it out. It says that a court may reduce or terminate an award of alimony if there are written findings that since the granting of the divorce and the subsequent alimony award, a supportive relationship has existed between the obligee, which is the person that is receiving the permanent alimony on a monthly basis, and someone or a, and a person with whom the obligee reside. Now we're going to go into the factors that the court will consider when determining if there's a supportive relationship. Well, the statute says that the court shall give consideration without limitation to circumstances, including but not limited to the following. And then it lists out 11 factors that the court can consider when determining if there is a supportive relationship. The first of the 11 factors is the extent to which the obligee and the other person who they are cohabitating with hold themselves out to be a married couple either by ongoing conduct like using the last name the same mailing or referring to themselves as husband and wife so what are some of the evidence that you may want to introduce are they a couple are they romantic or are they simply platonic the court would probably consider the testimony from those individuals and they got some explaining to do if you know what i mean in addition to that the court may consider the testimony of that couple's friends family members members, close associates, work colleagues, anybody that could give them the cheese, anyone that could give them the tea, anyone that could give them the 411 on whether or not they are a couple living with each other because that is the first factor. The second factor is the period of time that the obligee, the person who receives the alimony and the other person have lived together. Is it, is it just on the weekends? Is it every couple weeks? Or is it something that is more permanent? Does the person receiving alimony and their boyfriend or girlfriend have a rental agreement together. 
Are there possible mortgage documents that they have together? The third factor is the extent that the obligee and the third person have either uh, pooled their assets or income together or otherwise have exhibited financial interdependence. The big piece of evidence here would be joint bank account statements. Also, you can probably look at any type of property ownership that they may have jointly, any joint investment accounts, any type of will or testamentary document. In addition to this, uh, shared health insurance policy, or maybe even if they list each other as beneficiaries in their life insurance policy. Number four, the extent that the obligee and the third person have supported each other. Again, the bank statements, it always is in the finances. If you can show that there are Zelle transfers, if you can show that there's Venmo transfers, Cash App, if you can show that they're writing checks to each other, that is a smoking gun proof that they are financially supporting each other. If they have shared bills, good stuff. If they have a lease together, that shows that they're both responsible for the property that they're living in. Big piece of evidence. To the extent in which the obligee and the other has performed valuable services for the other, this can cover a whole variety of stuff. This can include all of the romantic stuff like the restaurants, to have a gym membership together. If they go on vacation, it could be evidence about emotional support do they have either text messages emails other messages showing compassion and exchanging communication in which they're each showing support to each other these are all subject to a subpoena number six the extent to which the obligee the person receiving alimony or the third party have provided a valuable service to either or's business is either of the people working at the other's business are they uh, getting paychecks from there are they getting bonuses from there are they getting some sort of fringe benefits from there the perfect place to find this information would be the subpoena work records like whether they be a attendance roster work emails social medias from the workplace there may be subpoenas for some of their work colleagues to come in and testify about whether or not they are supportive of each other in their business in their companies the seventh factor the court would consider whether or not the obligee the person receiving alimony and the other person have worked to create or enhance anything of value this runs the entire gambit it can include household chores financial contributions supporting each other in both personal and business pursuits number eight whether or not the obligee the person receives alimony and the third party have contributed or have jointly purchased any real or personal property and that is also a great piece of evidence you would search on the county records or the property search records to see if there's any properties, any type of deeds in which the parties now have property jointly together. Evidence in support of a claim that the obligee, the person receiving alimony, and the third party have an express agreement regarding property sharing or support. Again, it is all in the emails and correspondence between the parties, any mortgage statements, any property records, any social media posts. This is what you should be scouring to see if there's proof that they have committed to each other. The next factor is almost exactly similar, except that it's evidence in support of a claim that the obligee, the person receiving alimony, and the other person have an implied, not an express agreement regarding property sharing and support. The biggest piece of proof of having an apply, implied agreement is if, the, if you can prove that the parties are romantically involved and living together. Finally, the last factor that the court will consider is whether the obligee, the person receiving alimony, and the other person have provided support for the children of one another. Once again, the rise of blended families. So you have to follow the money trail. Also, so it doesn't say that it has to be monetary support. It says support. So does this third party bring the children to daycare? Maybe they babysit the children. Maybe they take them to the doctor's appointments. So you have to start thinking about how you can prove that there's more there than just a casual relationship. So as you can see upon a review of the statutory factors, the court will be looking to see if the person who is receiving alimony is in more than just a casual or platonic relationship. All of those factors have to do with trying to decide if that person, the person who is receiving alimony, is getting financial help from a third party, either 
be it financially, be it emotionally, be it support for work or for personal reasons. And if they are, that is the loophole for those of you who are paying permanent alimony to try to get it modified and or terminated. All right, as a tiny side note, this uh, statute has a very interesting section that says that this paragraph referring to the statute does not abrogate or terminate the requirement that every marriage in this state, every marriage in Florida, be solemnized under a license and does not recognize common law marriage. So it goes the extra step to say, even though you may have this relationship going on common law marriage doesn't exist which is what we covered in one of our previous videos so that's a wrap on our loophole for how to stop paying permanent alimony in florida so if you know anyone that's going through this type of issue you can have them look us up at www.cigaralawfirm.com we have offices in miami and orlando florida please if you would do us a favor like this video and subscribe to the divorce broadcast and keep your eyes wide open when dealing with supportive relationships thank you